Okay, hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to uh, demonstrate to you how we can use Blender to generate um, G-code to use with our CNC milling machine. And if you look at the video I've got here, um, basically I'm, I've taken a piece of wood and I'm doing a first like a rough cut and then a finishing pass to mill out this sculpture of mountains that you can see on the other part of my screen in Blender. And these mountains are actually, if I hide my paths, um, it's the mountains just behind us. Um, it, this should be Lion Rock here, and I think, <laughs> I think Lion Rock, Beacon Hill, and this will be us down here somewhere. Um, all right, so there's quite a few settings here we need to be really careful of. So I'll walk you through this step by step, but when we do it in class, we'll probably want to check your settings anyway. Um, but I want to, you know, go through it step by step, um, both so you can remember and I can remember. And also, as we progress, we will probably improve these um, because there's lots of uh, much more sophisticated approaches we can do, um, especially if we look at the documentation on the website for the plugin that we're going to use today. Um, but this is just enough to get us started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is I'll just have a fresh version of Blender here. You're going to need to install the plugin that can take. Um, uh, a 3D object in Blender and um, calculate the paths for a CNC milling machine. So you're going to need to go to um, BlenderCam, BlenderCam.com, that's the add-on that we're going to use. Um, it's got lots and lots of information on their website, um, guides and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, so if you want to learn more about this, I really recommend looking through their website. To get the download, uh, sorry, the add-on. Just hit download. It'll take you to the download page. Choose your operating system. In this case, I'm on Mac, and I've already downloaded it here. Um, if I pop into my um, my downloads, I'm just going to copy this, and I'm going to pop it in a folder where I just keep a bunch of my Blender add-on backups. You can put it in your Documents folder or wherever is logical. Um, but basically, that zip folder, we're going to leave it zipped, and that's what we're going to use um, to install our add-on. So I've got it here, this Fabex CNC. It doesn't need to be expanded like this, just that zip file itself is fine. So if you pop back into Blender, you'll need to go into your edit preferences and this window should pop up. And you'll go into get extensions and add-ons, hold on, where, where are we? Install from disk, I think, let's try that. Install from disk. Okay, so I'll go to that folder where I have my, whoops, where I have my add-ons. Go into my add-ons folder, and now here, this fabxcnc.zip. If I install from disk, that should add, um, add it to my system. There we are. And then if I just go into add-ons, I'll just check. So if I go fabx, and there it is, it's ticked. So once you have the uh, plugin installed, you'll notice I've just jumped over to a file where I've prepared an object. You'll notice you should have, if you press N on your keyboard, you'll have your item menu here. There should be a little tab that says CNC. If you click at it, click on it at the moment, it, it won't do anything, but it's there. Okay. All right. So um, before we get started, I'll just um, go over a couple of things in terms of how our object is set up. Um, the object that I'm going to uh, mill is this little um, demonstration of, uh, as I said, kind of the mountains near the university. What I've done is I've put the, um, I've placed the object so that the top of the object is below the surface of our like Z axis where our Z would be zero. If Z is height here, Z zero is here and it's below that. Um, if we look from the top, it's in the positive Y and the positive X. Um, so we can think of it as like, that's where our machine's going to be in the um, positive Y, positive X. Okay. Um, other things to look at, it's not 3D printing. You know, we're not sort of going up layer by layer. We're removing layers of wood. So you'll notice that there's no overhangs. There's nothing like sort of... Um, there's nothing like, like this because we can't get under here and remove material there. Right, and, and our, our mill doesn't have the ability to rotate what we're working on. So 
just think about that in terms of like what you might like to use this machine for. You've got to think logically, like a cutting bit can't come down and get something from under here without taking away the stuff on top first. So that does place a bit of a limitation um, on what we cut. But if you, if you really do want to become more of an expert on this, um, there's a huge amount of information on the Blendercam website, which has lots of different strategies for making different types of um, and, cu and cutting away different forms. So it can get you know, far more complex. And to be honest, I'm not like a great expert on this. It's something I'm, I'm really interested in learning more about. So what I'm going to cover here is going to be quite simple. What I'm covering is actually largely um, derived from this great YouTube account, Open Source CNC. Um, they've got um, some great tutorials on um, the Fabex CNC and the previous version, which used to be called BlenderCam. So I've just taken a few things from this to make this simple video for our class. All right, so let's keep going. So let's say I've got my object here. I've got it in my positive Y, positive X, and I've got it below Z0. Next, first thing we need to do is set our um, blender units to millimeters. So if you go into the scene properties here and the units, by default, blender is in meters. Um, so you'll just need to set it to millimeters. And for lots of reasons, millimeters can be a, a good um, uh, unit to work in depending on what you're doing. Um, so that's how you change the units. The next thing you'll need to do is go to the render engine. And now we've got an extra option here called Fabex CNC Cam. Um, if I click that, and now if I click on my CNC tab, we still don't have anything. Okay, we need to set up um, a few more settings. With the object selected, um, I just need to add a new operation, click plus, and it's going to make one called, I guess, operation, and then the name of, of my object, which is called topography. I guess it should be called topology, topography. No, topography. Topography final one. Um, some other things that you'll need to set up will be some specific things about our machine itself. Um, our machine has a work area of 40 millimeters on the x-axis by 60 millimeters, oh, sorry, 400 millimeters on the x-axis, 60 millimeters on the y-axis, and 10 on our depth on our z-axis. Um, and now that we've added that operation, we can actually see a visualization of our machine work area. Um, and I could, if I toggle this size from model, it'll calculate the size that we're working with um, based on the model I've got selected, which is um, good enough for me. I don't need to like add that in myself. Um, I'm just going to use the model as a guide. OK. Um, in terms of feed rate and spindle speeds, um, I'm not sure what it will be as your default when you have your plugin installed, but you can have the feed rate set at uh, 1500 as a default with a minimum of zero and the maximum at 2000 and you can have the spindle speed at a default of 15,000 with a minimum of 5,000 and a maximum of 30,000. Uh, okay um, our post processor that's going to be Mac 3 that's the software that our um, our laptop is um, sending the signals to our CNC machine with so Mac 3 is what you should have your post processor set at and then again, unit system metric in millimeters. Um, collet size is 33 millimeters. I think that's all we need up here. I think that's good. All right. Um, so now that we've got that operation set, you should have plenty of options now pop up in your um, in this CNC tab. And what we're going to do? Don't need that. I've just got these notes here. These are the main settings that we're going to need. We're going to do. If I was to mill this or the, the example I did, I did um, two milling operations. One was roughing, where we just take away most of the wood with a big um, milling head. And then we do finishing, where we use a much smaller, um, different shaped milling head to smooth out and to get some of the smaller details. Um, so for this, I made two separate G-code files, and, um, and then I fed them into the machine one at a time. OK, so let's look at the first one, roughing. So for roughing, what I did is I set my strategy to parallel. So that just means it's going to cut in lines, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, I set a skin to 0.75, and I set a step over. So these settings are quite important to 2.5 millimeters. Um, now, I've got a warning pop up here at the moment. Um, I'll explain what that is. Step over, imagine that like. 
imagine that the drill head is going across here. Now step over is like how far across does it go until it does the next line? And um, obviously it can't leave a big gap because then there'll be a whole lot of wood left in the middle. So the step over, what that actually is, is, um, is it's, it means it's going to sort of overlap. So like if we've got a six millimeter cutter, our step over at two and a half millimeters, that means that each cutting pass, it's going to overlap the previous one by a small amount. So now if I've got this warning here, but if I set my cutter to six millimeters, that warning goes away because the, the thickness of the cutter, every time it cuts across, it's going to remove six millimeters worth of wood. And then it's going to step over, it's going to move across another two and a half millimeters and do another pass. So the relationship between these is quite important. So the settings I've got, six millimeter flat end tool. So I've got end here and I've got a step over of 2.5 millimeters. And then I'm also gonna use layers. So layers here means that I don't wanna just um, try to cut all the way down in one go because that'll definitely ruin our drill bit or probably break it because we can't just move through the wood like it's um, soft clay, it's hard wood. So we have to do it in lots of layers. So I'll tick the layers tab and I'm gonna set my layers at also 2.5 millimeters. So that means that every layer it will cut down 2.5 millimeters and then go across and then it'll move across that step over size and then cut down that 2.5 millimeters again. Okay, so we'll just go down and just check all of our other settings. Um, parallel, good, skin, 0.75, um, step over, 2.5. Uh, we don't, I'm not gonna use array or bridges. Our safe height at 10 millimeters. Um, Cutter stays in ambient limits, that's fine. Layers set at 2.5 millimeters. Our cutter is gonna be an end cutter at six millimeters with two flutes. Um, the feed rate I'll just leave here at, um, actually I'll make that 1800. And our spindle speed at 12,000, that's fine. And I'm gonna put in output trailer with the command MO2. I'll come to this at the end, it's just, um, how our G-code finishes off. Uh, we don't have a dust collector. Um, climb down is fine. Z clearance, safe height at 10 millimeters, that's also fine. Um, everything else there is fine. Okay, I don't think I've forgotten anything. All right, so let's give this a go. So now that I've got all of that set up, what I will do is I'll click this calculate and export G-code. But first of all, you'll see that you've probably with your um, plugin, you should have some new tabs here, but they're a bit small. So if you just grab here and drag across, um, we get some information about our G code as we make it. So that's really handy. Um, another thing we need to do is we need to tell um, uh, G code sender where to send our G code, um, which I believe should be in our, I think our output. Um, so if I go into, hold on. I'll just set to my G-code folder for this course. I'll hit accept. I think that's where our G-code is gonna go. Okay, so once that's finished processing, um, you should be able to see both our, um, here are our parallel passes. You can see the step over. So that'll be 2.5 millimeters in between each step over. Um, if we look down the X-axis, we can see the layers. So this is our first layer cutting down here. So that means that this is also 2.5 millimeters cutting down then going across in all of these layers until we get our first rough version of the form. Now if I pop into my finder, um, I was wrong. It didn't actually go into that G-code folder. It goes into the root folder where your Blender file is stored and it will have made the file, I think it'll be this one. Um, it should be named after the operation you've got. So I've, here I've got Optopo Topography Final 1 and I've got this Optopography Final 1.tap here again. So I would just rename this and go like op topography, I don't know, let's call it like tutorial rough one. And then I'm gonna change the file um, suffix or the file type to G code. And I'll say use G code, um, cause that's the file type that our, um, our Mach 3 software will read. 
and we can have a little look at the g-code and there's one thing I want to change just at the end of the g-code manually very simple little change but always good to have a look at the g-code so you understand what you're doing very much like the drawing machine we've been using we've got our header here are all of our cuts and if we go all the way to the bottom this is our footer um, now there's a couple of little things missing that I thought would be here um, maybe I forgot to tick something do I have footer ticked trailer I do okay mo2 all right okay so the things that I'd like to see at the end here I've got um, this command mo2 but I also want um, M05 and M30. So I think this is just things like it's like sending the plotter back to home, it's turning off the spindle, um, and then I'm just going to put in a percentage sign at the end, which means that's the end of the um, that's the end of the operation. Okay, so at the end, you know, we've got um, our our cutting head has gone back up to our safe height of Z, and then I've just got these three commands: M05, M30. MO2 and then a percentage sign. I'm just going to save that, close it, and now we'll just um, change a couple of settings from our roughing to our finishing. Okay, so I'm just going to um, delete that path. So I can just go here and press X. And we're just going to change a small number of things. Um, if you look at my notes here, instead of using a six millimeter um, flat end, we're going to use a two millimeter ball nose. So I'll set this here to ball nose and I'll put this here at two millimeters. And we're getting a warning, and the warning is because our step over is still um, very high. You know, at, at the moment, our step over is larger than the diameter of the bit, which of course would break the bit because we can't move over um, a larger distance than the thickness of the bit. That would definitely break it. So we're going to set this much smaller at 0 0.3 millimeters, so that warning is gone. And then we're going to turn off the layers. And the reason we can turn off the layers is that if we've done the roughing, we've already removed all of this wood from up here. So we're just really going over the surface and um, tidying it up and, and putting in the smaller details. So, okay, so we've got a ball nose, two millimeters, step over at 0 0.3 and no layers. So that should be fine. So now, again, I'm going to calculate path and export G-code. We can watch it process here. And it's going to take, well, it's going to take an hour and 13 minutes, so a little bit slower. And if we look here, we can see that if we look down our axes, there's no layers anymore. It's just, you know, going straight down. Here you can see it's going straight down. And then it's just tracing over and much closer intervals and it'll just be smoothing things out um, again you know I'm sure there's much cleverer ways we can get much more detail and so on this is sort of like I don't know this is my getting started tutorial and I'm hoping to get my techniques a bit more advanced as well but I think um, for us to get started this is this is okay all right so now again I'm just going to have a look at um, that a file that's just been made here and I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call it um, again op topography tutorial and I'll call this finishing and then I'll also put dot g code and then I'll just open it with my text editor and again I'll just have a look at the bottom and yeah I want to have that M05, M05, M30, M02, and then a percentage sign to say that's the end of the file. Save that, close it. And now these two G-code files, I would recommend putting them in your G-code folder, and then um, you can bring them to the machine and uh, we can test them out. Um, I also recommend keep your Blender file so I can have a look at it and we can look for any mistakes and, and things like that before we try things out. Okay, um, so I look forward to in, any of you who are interested in um, using the CNC machine. If you want to learn more, I strongly recommend um, reading through um, the website that the plugin comes with. Um, you can look through this YouTube channel. Um, you can look online at CNC milling, and there's a really an amazing range of things you can do with a machine like this. All right, 
I'll see you all in class. Bye-bye.